Hello everyone, this is Ants Portugal here and today I'm going to be starting my new series on this channel, my first series on this channel and I'll be calling it the Ant Care Species Guide. This series will consist of basically me coming around in a video where I'll explain to you step by step uh, what you have to do to correctly keep a certain species of ant. I'll start by covering every species of ant I own, and then I may move on to some I don't own. And if I get a new one, I'll work on doing a species guide on that species. So, this I'll try to make these videos very chill, very calm, very relaxing, so that you can take in all the information you need, but also, I'll try to keep them very correct. And as I'm mostly talking from my head right now, I have done my fair amount of research before this episode and i'll try to do that before each every episode each episode i do so that when i'm talking from my head like i'm doing right now i'll give you just just correct information nothing that is wrong and if i miss something then i'll add it in post so today we're going to be talk about we're going to be talking about the species mess or barbarous or but, you know, I'm Portuguese, so saying these Latin names while speaking in English becomes very difficult to me. So here you have Google Translator saying you how this is supposed to be said in Latin. Mesur barbarus. Yeah, that one. Um, this is a species that is also known as a harvester ant, and it's very common in South Europe. There are three variants to this species. You can, you can normally find the, the all black type of ant where head, thorax and abdomen are all black. Then there are two, two variants. One of them is where the head is red on the queen and on all the workers. And the other one is where both the head and the abdomen are, are red on the queen and on all the workers. If you, if you find a queen that, that is from one of these variants, you can be assured that the workers, maybe not the first ones because they'll be very small, but the major workers at least will have these same colors. The, the small workers will have them, but as some of them are very small, you might not be able to see it. Okay, so this species lives primarily on south of Europe, as I have said. They exist in Portugal, in Spain, and in some places in the south of France. They are known to get really big and make really big trails of ants running across a field, looking for seeds or just traveling from one nest to a satellite nest as they have very big colonies for a species of ant that, that is monogenous which means they have only one queen and produces such big majors. So I should get to that. Um, this colony only has one queen and that queen has about 15 millimeters. Uh, the, the majors can have the same size as the queen and they'll have a very big head that will be used to smash down seeds and make a paste that is called ant bread. And that's the primarily the primary food source of this species. The miners can be as small as maybe like five millimeters, but um, they really vary in size. There's no soldiers, there's no ant task with only defending the net, the nest, but the big majors can inflict a very painful bite and this species cannot sting in any way. So it's very beginner friendly, even though they grow to a very big size, both in numbers and in the size of the ants. And they can chew through a lot of stuff. So you, I'll, I'll touch on that in just a little bit. This, um, this ant has claustral founding, which means that the queen, after, mate, after mating, she will dig a little hole in the ground and she'll, she'll stay there, put her eggs and watch them and care for them as they turn to larvae, to pupae and then to ants. And she does not have to leave her nest and she does not have to eat during this process. So if you get a single queen for yourself of this species, you should keep her in a dark place inside of, um, of a test tube setup. 
you can find a lot of videos on the internet on how to correctly make a test tube setup for queen founding and you can keep her there just in the dark and you just check on her sometime to see if the workers have hatched already she doesn't need anything else so for diet mass or barbarous is as i said um as an ant, a species of ant that feeds primarily on seeds and that means that they are granivores basically and they can be uh, fed only seeds for the for the entire life of the colony you can get the colony from queen to 10000 workers because that's basically the maximum the maximum size you'll get only feeding them seeds because seeds have protein and carbs and that's all the ants normally need these ants do not need any added sugars most of their moisture comes from the seeds they eat so they not they don't really need drinking water they just need some humidity in the nest um but it is it is better if you offer them these things i said they could be lacking if you offer them insects they'll be very pleased and if you offer them some moisture that they can drink, some water that they can drink off of, it would be very good. Although you have to pay attention to the fact that Messer Barbaros is not equipped to deal with large bodies of water as they exist primarily on arid zones and areas of the countries in which they live. So if you have a big body of water in the setup, they will be drowning. Okay, you have to you have to give them water in some other way or not give them water at all as if you give them insects they will have all the water they need because inside insects insides are very moist okay now climate as I've said it's very arid the regions they live in and the the nest has to have some humidity to it basically I will say some numbers but you just just give them a gradient and they will choose for you. Uh, the humidity should be somewhere around 60%. You can do a little a little below and a little above. And they, they can take it, especially a little below. Uh, if you go from somewhere to like 50 to 70, they'll be just fine. But you, you should not um, aim for the numbers. You should just keep it consistent and have a gradient. With having a gradient means that one side of the nest will very will be very moist and the other side will be completely dry. And in between, there will be a gradient and you can see where they are putting their eggs and you try to maximize the area of that, of that humidity level. One other thing you should keep in, in mind is that they, they store seeds. They find seeds in the outworld that you should give them because it's it's the main thing they eat and they they don't eat them immediately they store them in the nest and if the seeds have a high humidity they will germinate and they'll become plants and they'll and the ants will no longer be able to eat them so you should make sure there is a, a dry space in the nest wherever they're nesting there should be a dry space or a, a separate nest that is completely dry for them to store their seeds um also this um this species can take a heat it can take very big very high temperatures they can take about 30 degrees celsius on the outworld so if you live in a hot place in the summer it's okay to keep them um also they can hibernate so if your temperature drops for below 15 celsius they can hibernate and they normally in the wild they'll do it from november to february and if you have a collection of ants and they all can hibernate i think you should hibernate them all because it's a very it's very good to have um have a sort of a of a pause of a holiday from your hobby and normally it will happen during the winter so just during winter, you have to take care of your ants. But if you don't want, it's okay. I, I don't find there is any problem with in not hibernating your ants. I personally don't hibernate any of my ants, and you'll see them in a bit. 
Um, so the setup should consist of an outworld and the nest. They can be put together. You can do an, um, a naturalistic setup. You can do something with nests that you buy online that are proper for ants. You can do a sort of tubs and tube setup that you can find on Ants Australia channel, how to make those. You can do anything that, and these ants will be fine as long as they have the proper conditions I've told you about before. Now, you can do all of this, but you have to pay attention to a couple of things, you know. This species of ant has those big majors that I talked about, and they are built to crunch stuff in general, whether they eat seeds or, for example, white tongue. If you put Master Barbaros in a white tongue nest, they will crunch their way out. They'll drill a hole through the, to, through the white tongue and they'll get out of there. And so if you have something like a self-made acrylic box to put them in, you should take very close attention because they can chew through silicone as well. Um, so the best thing you can get for them is something that is made in a factory by a company that has no edges that they can latch on to to crunch. Um, if you find anything that you think you can put them into, go ahead because it's they're not tropical and they are not a hazardous ant if they get if they get out. It's not a problem if they if they escape their enclosure. They are they are easy to take care of in that matter. Okay, so it's it's fine most likely. So right now I've given you everything that I know of about this species that me and Google of course know of because I've been done, doing some research. That's it, guys. I hope you liked it, and if you did, please leave a like down below. If you have any critics, doubts, questions, or anything else you want to add to this video, just leave a comment down below, and I'll get back at you as soon as I can. And I, I would like to ask you to please consider subscribing as you can stay up with all the animal stuff I will be doing in this channel.